Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time, and it's time to brawl. Now that gears have been introduced into the game, we have 40 different builds for each brawler instead of just four like we used to have. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the best build for the legendary brawlers. I'll be doing other brawlers in future videos, so make sure you guys subscribe for that. Our first legendary brawler is Spike. Now Spike can deal a lot of damage with his main attack from a close range, but he's actually mostly useful. He's competitive at a long range where he can chip away at enemies' health with his thorns. And even though I like both of his star powers, I think his curveball star power is the the better option, at least for right now, for most players at most skill levels. This allows him to charge his super a lot faster with this ability, and it's especially true for enemies that try and take cover behind walls. Yes, Spike can still hit brawlers from behind walls without curveball, but he hits way more often with it, which is why it's part of my best build for him. Now for his gadget, I definitely think the life plan is the way to go. On uh, Seriously, like 100% of the time, it's so good. It counters a lot of brawlers at any range because it forces them to waste shots on it, and Spike can continue attack right through it, which is something they can't do unless they pierce through it. And because of its healing effect, it's not even totally useless against brawlers who can pierce through these cactus. Now the first gear I put on Spike is the shield gear, okay? It, it kind of helps him tank an extra shot from most brawlers, which would otherwise normally take him out, and that's especially good for brawlers that have low HP. It's usually not that hard for a long range brawler to heal up to full health, so Spike should get a lot of value out of this gear. Now this gear also pairs well with his damage gear because if Spike is able to take an extra hit or two, he'll start start dealing way more damage below 50% health and be more likely to stay alive under 50% health. Even the thorns from his damage boost actually chip enemies health away much faster and because he can stay out of the range of most brawlers and hide behind his life plant cactus, sometimes Spike can continue to safely fire shots at low health. Now keep in mind that brawlers like speed or resistance could actually be better on Spike but they actually very much depend on the map that you're playing and the brawlers that you're facing. So while these two gears might be best for Spike overall, you're eventually going to want to get the other gears for him anyway, but that's actually true for all the brawlers, so just keep that in mind. But overall, this is what I would say is Spike's best build, okay? His curveball star power, his life plant gadget, with the shield and the damage gear. By the way, I didn't come up with these best builds myself. Moxie did. Hi, I'm Moxie. Now he's a semi-pro player who I actually hired to make sure that videos like this are as accurate as possible. He's way better at Brawl Stars than I am, so you guys can trust the content in this video. <laughs> Next we got Crow and then we'll talk about Leon. Now even though Crow is technically named an assassin, he actually relies on gradually taking an enemy's health away little by little and keeping them poisoned for long periods of time. At least at the competitive level, you have to be really smart about when you actually jump on somebody and a lot of times it's just better for you to use your super to try and run away from people. Now since his opponents usually spend a lot of time poisoned, Crow gets the most use out of his extra toxic star power to nerf enemy damage. Carrying Crow is still a good star power, and it's prob probably the better one in like solo showdown, but extra toxic is way better for the competitive modes because it helps his whole team and encourages a play style that is usually safer for Crow. Now another ability that helps the whole team is his slowing toxin gadget, since it can slow down multiple targets at once and gives your teammates plenty of time to take out anyone that got slowed slowed because they get slowed for so long. Now normally I would put the damage gear on Crow just because damage is really good in general, but even though Crow's description calls him an assassin, like I said, he mostly plays like a support brawler. So resistance is the better one for Crow because he does not want to get caught being slowed or stunned. And he's fast enough that with this resistance gear, even if he does get slowed, he's going to be able to escape pretty easily. Now the other gear that pairs well with his style of gameplay and his low health is obviously the shield gear because that's going to help keep him alive longer and make him a bigger pest than he already is. This gear also pairs very nicely with his extra toxic star power since it makes Crow extra tough to take down with both of them equipped. <laughs> Yeah. And that makes this his best build, his extra toxic star power, his slowing toxin gadget, and the resistance and shield gears. Up next, we have Leon. Now, unlike Crow, Leon absolutely is an actual assassin, and he obviously works best by charging his super slowly from a distance and then using it to sneak up on enemies and take them out up close. While his smoke trail star power does help him do this more effectively, his invisiheal star power just, it just gives so much more value, and it's almost always the better choice. Even though Leon can take out most any brawler that he can get close to, he usually takes a good amount of damage before he defeats them, and fortunately, Leon charges his super very quickly, so he can kill somebody, and then he can use his star power and go invisible and heal himself a ton, and then by the time his invisibility runs out, he's gonna be at full HP, so he can then try and take somebody else out. For his gadgets, absolutely use Lollipop Drop, right? This may not give his teammates a permanent invisibility, but it does last long enough for the entire team to have a big advantage, especially if that 
that team does not get rid of this gadget. As for his gears, I think his shield is an obvious choice since he's very likely to take damage when he sneaks up on enemies, and pairing that with damage is just another really obvious choice, because Leon is very likely to be dealing damage below 50% health, because he gets close and personal to his enemies. Not only is he going to be able to have more HP to be able to survive those close encounters, but he's also going to be able to deal more damage to take them out faster, so that they have less time to take him out, and you know, obviously that is it's just really good. It's a win-win for both of these gears. And then obviously when he isn't sneaking up on brawlers, both of these gears are great for him, even when he's playing long range and poking from a distance while he's waiting for his super to get charged up. His speed gear is also really good because it helps him just get a little bit faster in those bushes, and he does spend a lot of time in the bushes. And because Leon is a close range assassin, he's very likely to get stunned or slowed, so resistance also works great. But overall, this is Leon's best build. His Invisi Heal Star Power, his Lollipop Drop Gadget, and then the damage and the shield gears. Now, by the way, you'll actually notice that I upgraded two different gears for Leon, and that is because you are limited to how many tokens you will get for each gear. So if you're going for two gears on every brawler, you won't have enough to get the best build for every brawler. And that's why I recommend watching my best upgrade order guide right here after you watch this video. But for now, let's talk about Sandy's best build and Amber's best build. Sandy has the shortest range out of all the legendary brawlers, so he plays a lot different than the ones we've already talked about so far. Both his star powers are really good, and honestly, I could flip a coin for every match to figure out which one I'm going to pick. Like, they're both so equally good that it's, it's really hard to choose, and the pros will agree with me on that. So while there isn't a wrong choice with his star powers, I do personally go with his healing wind star power more often, because Rude Sands will actually wake up enemies who are asleep because of Sandy's Sweet Dreams gadget. And Sweet Dreams is pretty much the must-use gadget no matter which star power you're using. Okay? It's so good. I can't tell you how many times I've stunned multiple enemies with it, which can absolutely be the difference between a win and a loss, especially in a game mode like Brawl Ball. Now for Sandy's gears, you want something that will help Sandy get close enough to the enemy so that he can actually charge up his super, and those two gears that do that are speed and shield. Obviously you want something other than speed if your map does not have bushes, but most of the time I think that these are the two best gears for Sandy, because Sandy's actually usually a pretty popular pick on bushy maps. And the shield gear is just great pretty much in any situation, and it works on Sandy great like it works on all brawlers, right? Now that makes Sandy's best build his healing wind star power, his sweet dreams gadget, and the speed and shield gears. Up next is Amber, and then we'll talk about Meg. Amber is a great brawler for controlling areas, because people want to avoid that oil that she throws down, because if they do get caught on fire, it's going to deal constant damage to them, and add that damage to her attack damage, which is insane, they're going to really struggle, right? Sometimes Amber actually does struggle in 1v1s against brawlers that outrange her, and while her Scorch and Siphon is a good star power, it really doesn't help her in a 1v1 situation unless her hope opponent is just like a really big tanky brawler coming straight for her. The more practical and consistent star power is her Wild Flames star power. She's just able to charge her super just by standing next to her oil. Then we have Amber's Fire Starters gadget, which is her only gadget, and that makes this job really easy for this video, but it does pair very nicely with her Wild Flame star power, and I think it's probably always going to be a solid choice for Amber. Now when it comes to her gears, I really like the speed gear because it helps um, Amber overcome enemies that outrange her, and those enemies are usually the ones that she struggles with, right? And it makes it impossible for enemies to outrun her when they are actually within range, because she'll be in the bush, she's moving faster than them, they can't run away. And <laughs> Amber, you just hold that auto-aim button down, she's going to take them out, right? When you're using this gear, you just have to be especially careful about not burning the bushes that you want to be using with her super, and if you can do that, then you should be good. Now for her second gear, I really like damage. She is such a high damaging brawler, and she really benefits from it, especially because she doesn't have a very long range in comparison to a lot of brawlers, and that means that she's very likely to be dealing damage to enemies after she's been knocked down below 50% health. And that makes this Amber's best build. Her Wild Flame Star Power, her Fire Starters Gadget, and the Speed and Damage Gears. And finally, we have our last legendary brawler, Meg. Meg is easily the worst brawler in the game when she is not operating her mecha. When she is in her mecha, it's a very different story, okay? So, her best builds really focus on getting her into that robot and keeping her robot alive. Her force field star power provides her with a shield after losing her mecha, and that shield is actually really strong. And that gives her some time to kind of back up reload some ammo, and then use that ammo to recharge her super again. Then obviously we have her Jolting Volts gadget, which is her only choice right now. Once again, easy for this video, but the healing from it is actually really good because the health from her mecha, I mean, it's really important. And that's because you want to keep her in that mecha as long as possible. Now, Meg's gears are a little tricky because they don't actually affect the mecha at all. 
Like, it was just kind of weird, but that, I don't know if it's a, a bug or if that's actually intended by Super. So when we're thinking about the best gears, it's just for Meg. It's not for her mecha, and the best ones for her are absolutely going to be Resistance and Shield, because they will be best at helping her stay alive long enough to recharge her Super. I could also see Speed being good because she's already fast, which means that she'll get a bigger speed boost than most of the Brawlers, but Resistance and Shield are just going to keep her alive longer, which is especially important when she doesn't have her threatening mecha to actually scare enemies away. And that makes this her best build. Her force field star power, her jolting volts gadget with the resistance and shield gears. And those are all the best builds for all the legendary brawlers. And I wanted to remind you guys again that star powers and gadgets and especially gears can be conditional on what you're going to be doing on the map that you're playing, the mode you're playing, the teammates you have, the enemies you're facing. But as a general rule, these builds are really great for the brawlers that I talked about in this video. Once again, if you're looking for an upgrade guide on how to best spend your gear tokens across all of your brawlers, I recommend watching this video right here. It was also made by Moxie and has some really good information in there. Make sure you guys subscribe for more Brawl Stars content and you can subscribe here for Clash Mini content, which is Supercell's newest game, which I'm very excited for it. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.